K-I-L-R Taylor Games Hello gamers, simmers, and pilots. I am the Killer Gamer, and welcome to the beginning of the tour around the world featuring X-Plane 8. This is actually rather exciting because we've been doing the world tour with the other X-Planes as well, going all the way back to X-Plane 5 and flying the same flight plan, which gives you a chance to actually see flights from one airport to another and look at the details and see how things uh, were changed over the years. And we've been doing that since uh, the Sublogic uh, Commodore 64. That was the very first flight simulator that I ever flown. It was on our family computer. And I, well, basically I, I, I wanted to relive the memories that I had and then I figured, hey, why not share that with people um, online because nobody else is doing that and it just kind of it's it just went from there so on September 22nd 2018 is the very first episode of the uh, Sublogic Flight Simulator 2 World Tour and uh, also on that same day I had went to the Commodore Amiga which was my very first computer that I bought Flight Simulator 5 my very first PC Flight Simulator 98, which was <laughs> one of my favorites, and X-Plane, X-Plane 11, which I had just recently uh, bought at the time and was amazed uh, by what it had to offer out of the box. And adding ortho photos to it uh, just made it even more amazing. And then from there, it just it kind of spread. Uh, the next uh, subsequent days um, after that, I had added Flight Simulator 2000, which I only had done uh, three flights of uh, back when it first came out because uh, just didn't just didn't appeal to me. Uh, but that was one that I wanted to get more out of and start making new experiences with that. And then Flight Simulator 2002, which I had never flown. Uh, Flight Simulator 2004, which was uh, I was completely amazed by it when it first came out. I was like, wow, this is the simulator I've been waiting for. And then uh, FSX. And those were released out on a weekly basis. And over time, I started adding simulators, more simulators that I hadn't flown before, like from uh, Flight Simulator 1 to Flight Simulator 4 and uh, Sierra Pro Pilot and Terminal Realities Fly, Sublogic uh, Flight, which I had never heard of before, and also the old X-Planes, which I wasn't sure if I was going to do, but I knew that there was a passionate X-Plane community out there, and I didn't want to leave them out. Uh, and, you know, I'm sure some of you are probably curious about these old X-Planes, and so, you know, this is for you. This gives you a chance to be able to see these old X-Plane uh, simulators in action and be able to compare them over time. Let's go ahead and talk about uh, the flight we're going to be doing. Okay, so what you're seeing here is the map for the Sublogic Flight Simulator 2. I, you know, like I mentioned, that was the first uh, flight simulator of the World Tour and I just being keeping it consistent with all the flight simulators so you can kind of see you know where I was coming from in regards to which airports I, I was picking because yeah, later on well you know th there were you know more airports um, obviously the flight simulator 2 did you know couldn't put every airport in there 
So we are right here at Merrill C. Meggs because, hey, if you're going to do a world tour, might as well start off at the very classic airport. And we're going to be flying to Chicago Hair International. Definitely got to be one spot uh, that, that we got to go to. So it's a very short flight on this one just to kind of get you warmed up and introduced to the world tour and what it's all about. And X-Plane does have maps uh uh, of its own and this will become important uh, when we start getting into areas that you know were not covered on uh, the earlier simulators from flight simulator 1 through 3 and uh, sublogic uh, flight simulator 2 and this is uh, very helpful we got different ways we can pull up maps here you can see that we're at Chicago Megs and by this time the airport was actually closed but they still have it in here, which I thought was kind of cool. So instead of KCGX, it's actually XCGX. And we're going to be flying over here to Chicago Hair. We even got the frequency here, 113.90, which, interesting enough, is not the same frequency now. If you look on Navigraph, it's, it's different. And we got uh, different things that we can do here. We can have a low on-route maps and high on-routes. We can do a sectional map and we can even have a textured map. And uh, also you can, you know, add uh, you know, reference markers like NDBs and ILSs and which even gives you the frequencies, which is uh, very nice. Uh, waypoints and even a uh, little rose stuff here, um, which is very helpful if you're looking to uh, create a, a flight path and you kind of want to know which heading you need to go to. You know, so in generally, we need to go at a heading of 300 here. We even have a planetary map here, uh, which works a lot smoother and looks a lot nicer than the one that was for the Microsoft Flight Simulator ones. Um, it didn't start looking really good until Flight Simulator 2000, uh, 2020. So... Uh, you can tell that uh, Microsoft has been paying attention to what X-Plane uh, has been doing. But enough of that. You're here to see a flight, so let's do the flight. We're going to go ahead and turn on our power here and get the engine started. Okay, I didn't have everything turned on. <laughs> let's try it again. All right, looks good. We'll get our lights on here. Turn on the radio. We even got some ATC chatter here. Just generic, and there's not much of it. And unfortunately, I haven't been able to find a way to add more chatter. It'd be nice um, if there's a way to customize that. Uh, if you know, hey, let me know. We can get our radio set up. Um, we can get some DME information here, and I've already got Chicago Hair tuned in here. So about 15 miles away, not very far. And we'll go ahead and get uh, the VOR set up here. Let's see, I believe it was 113.9er. And we'll get our VOR or the OBS here eh, pretty close to 300. Since that's what we saw on the uh, X plane map. And also, too, we've got ATC here as well. Not a good, not as good as what Microsoft had, but you know, it's it's basic. So we'll go ahead and get ADIS information, and we'll uh, we'll get that from Chicago O'Hare. Chicago O'Hare INTL information echo. 1400 Zoala weather. Sky conditions 7400 scattered, 19500 scattered. Visibility 25. Temperature 13.2.0. Wind calm. Altimeter 2,992. <laughs> Arriving and departing runway 32 left. Advise on initial contact you have echo. So they have this spaced out. Probably should have done that with the 
2,992 made it 29.92 or something, but that's okay. And just like all the other uh, X-Planes, we have that blade element theory working for us. So, you know, if you're familiar with X-Plane 10 and X-Plane 11, you'll feel quite comfortable uh, flying flying these old simulators. It feels like a simulator. It doesn't feel like a game. We've got some hot air balloons that show up. They're relatively low. They they don't seem to <laughs> float very high. We got some AI traffic. You can see that there in the distance. They just kind of hang around your area. They don't really fly anywhere. You know, like they don't have any real flight plans or anything. If we had a tower here, we could uh, get permission to lift off, but. Well, no tower or anything. We could add one. But I want to keep things uh, pretty much out of the box for the moment. And then we can add stuff on our own as we as we move by. But figured you might want to see, you know, what it looks like out of the box. Let's turn on our landing lights. That might be good. Making use of our elevator trim. We'll look behind us. Well, we can't see much, but. United A Heavy, uh, answer that, answer that call there. Got a little bit of jitteriness here as we get closer to downtown Chicago here. Obviously these are just generic buildings. But, you know, if you don't care about that and you're looking more, more or less for the flight experience itself, then I, I think you'll feel quite at home here with uh, X-Plane, X-Plane 8. We have vector roads, uh, which even have cars that drive on them. Except I'm not seeing any cars there, but it is in the options. I do have it turned on. And quite honestly, it I think it looks quite good. You know, if you don't care about how accurate it is. Uh, it's actually quite nice. I mean, even better than what Microsoft Flight Simulator did at the time, in my opinion. Twenty 
We got a little bit off course here. Not too far. That's our that's our direction. That's the way we want to go. It's not too hard to find O'Hare. But well, we got 11 miles to go in about eight minutes. Go ahead and get uh, permission. There's other things you can do with ATC, which are quite nice. You can request vectors to the airport, uh, request an ILS runway, and of course request landing. You can even declare an emergency and get vectors to the nearest uh, airfield. Cessna 4110 Tango Windcom, cleared to land runway 32 left Chicago O'Hare INTL. Now I think that has an ILS. This is where this map really comes in handy here. We'll pick up all the ILSs here and uh, Got to use this here to kind of zoom in. And this here should be runway 32. Here it is. Um, runway 32 ILS 108.95, it looks like. Okay, we got it tuned in here. Should be around uh, 320. There we go. We do have an autopilot down here. Kind of hard to read it. There is nav here, and one of these might be approach. I'm not sure. It's kind of hard because you can't really zoom in the control panel here. But we don't need that, right? We can do this manually. Just going to turn on our lights here. We are seven miles from the airport. I think that's probably a good time to start lowering some flaps here. Plane wants the nose up, so I'll use a little bit of pitch trim here. Let's get another thing of flaps. The interesting thing about the graphics is that 
you'd think that you would be able to max it out. Uh, but even with the RTX 2070 uh, Super, I can't max it out. Um, pretty much because well, this really wasn't optimized for that type of uh, graphics card. So, but I have it just a you know a notch below that, and you know it still looks quite nice. Our glide slope indicator here is. Down here, <laughs> we better uh, better capture that. There's 32 left. We have that natural pool to the right also. Which when I first played X-Plane 11 I was noticing that and then I had read a note that that is perfectly normal. That's what's supposed to happen. So I had learned something interesting uh, when I had flown X-Plane 11. And speaking of the World Tour, I try to do different things with each of the simulators, such as, um, you know, I add custom content and add-ons and try to make it a, a unique experience. And X-Plane 11, it's got the orthophotos, which none of the others do. But also, I do a documentary after each flight. Um as a kind of like an educational thing. I, you know, I just, I thought a documentary travel series would be kind of cool. And, you know, it'd be just like actually flying from one airport to another. You know, what would it be like? What would, you know, what does the real airport actually look like? And uh, what would we do when we got there? I mean, I would never be able to do this in real life. You know, so if you're looking for, you know, an interesting experience, check out the X-Plane 11 series. Uh, and then I did something special with uh, Prepared, P3D. It's a uh, cinematic. It's a cinematic series um, and also machinima where it's got a story. So there's no talking or anything. It's treated it like a story. And it will also fly to the same airports. I've been having a challenge trying to figure out uh, <laughs> the uh, story part of it as far as, you know, the airports, but well, I am working on it. And even though we got all this idle gen, we still don't have any uh, buildings at the airport. But like I said, I want to show show this to you out of the box. 
and as we get going, uh, you know, we'll start adding some uh, some custom content. That way we can make it, you know, its own unique experience. All right, we got our flaps up. I think I see. Nope, that's a runway. Looking for a taxiway here. There's one. A bit of a sharp angle there. So one of the other things you'll be able to compare between each of the X-Planes is like the textures of the taxiways. One of the X-Planes, I think it was X-Plane 7, uh, I don't like the textures <laughs> for the taxiways, they don't look so good. Uh, these don't look too bad though. Like looking for a place to park. All right, I think I see something over here. I hear 1984. I think of the year 1984. Some of you might think of that the book. But you know what? I've never read 1984. I probably should. I still like to give us a full flight experience, so, you know, that's why I'm taking the tax away and finding a natural place to park. Alright, get our parking brakes on and go ahead and turn off our lights, turn off the radio. And there we go, our first flight of the world tour. We even got some air, uh, some air balloons, uh, hot air, hot air balloons out there. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this flight, uh, and I hope hope you're looking forward to uh, the flights that are after this. So there is gonna, there is a playlist. So um, be sure to uh, pull that up and make it one of your favorites, and. Hey, if you like this video, um, please uh, go ahead and click a like and uh, share the video, leave some comments. Let me know what you think about uh, this video. Hey, did you play X-Plane 8 back in the day and um, things like that. And the, uh, the more activity that this video gets, the more chances uh, that people out there will be able to see it and you know, help each other out there. I'm sure there's uh, many people out there that would love to see something done with these uh, old X-Plane uh, videos. And, hey, if you're new here, subscribe. Ring that notification bell. Become, uh, become a part of the killer community because we have a really awesome community here and we want to continue to build it up because um, you know, I want to turn this uh, channel into something really special. Uh, the notification bell, you'll get notified of uh, future flight simulation content. Uh, I release content throughout the week, um, not necessarily flight simulator stuff, but I do other things as well. Uh, but the notification uh, will let you know what it is that I upload uh, and when. So you may be looking forward to some of those other x videos, and that's where that notification bell uh, comes in handy. Also, um, got some social media. I do uh, streaming on Twitch throughout the week. Um, so I hope you'll uh, come by and give me a follow. And uh, I will look forward to, to meeting with you and chatting with you on the streams. Sometimes when I, when I do record videos, I'll, I'll stream them. 
giving you all a chance to be a part of the show and being able to see a lot of this stuff early. Also have Instagram. I take uh, pictures and photos of projects that I'm working on behind the scenes. Uh, may want to give me a follow over there so that we can get a little peek on things that I'm working on. Another uh, great platform to follow me on is Twitter. That's our source for official killer news and announcements and I'll do some retweets of things that I think you might find interesting. Fun stuff. Fun stuff. Don't worry. I We don't do politics and stuff on this channel. There, there's plenty of other stuff out there. <laughs> and then there is Patreon. For those of you who would like to support what it is the, that I'm doing and invest in the channel and help me make it grow. And there are bonuses there. Hey, thanks so much for coming by and checking out the video. I really appreciate it. And I will see you on the next leg of our exciting journey. Have a killer, awesome day.